Hey guys, welcome back to the One Up Weekly. Yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah. welcome to the One Up Weekly, guys. We are Guess here. Guess what, Justin? What is it? Lewis can suck it because he said I wouldn't start on time. Oh. And I did. And we did. That's right. We actually got things together a little bit better today. That was kind of fun. And uh, I think we're going to have a fun show. A lot of people are probably wondering, what if? And so yeah. the main idea about what if is we're going to be talking about the Play Choice 10. And so what if Arcade 1UP actually came out with the Play Choice 10? We're going to give reasons why that would be really cool. And uh, we're going to actually show you everything you've ever wanted to know about the Play Choice 10. We're actually going to show a real Play Choice 10, That's right? right. Running, up and running. So I'm super excited about it. Um, how are we going to do this, Ralph? What's I don't know. The, we're going to go plan? down. We're going to go down. I'm going to go downstairs and we're just going to do it. We're just going to go for it. All right. I so think we should actually, I could head down there right now. We can just start right now. Okay. Do you want me to head down there? Let's do it. All right. Why I'm not? Going. All right. I'm going. You can okay. team up a little bit. All right. I'm out. I'm out. So keep in mind, guys, here's the idea. I think it's okay. I'm going to give everyone permission to like the Nintendo. A lot of us are really excited about arcade ROMs on Arcade 1UP. But keep in, keep in mind, Nintendo did come out with an Arcade 1UP cabinet. We're kind of going to be talking about it throughout the day uh, or throughout the show tonight about what if did, what if Arcade 1UP actually did get the rights to Nintendo to do a Play Choice 10. Maybe they couldn't get the rights for the main title of like a versus Super Mario Brothers, but what if, what if they could do a Play Choice 10? So we got Ralph here. Hey, guys. <laughs> I'm down here in the arcade room. So, uh, so yeah, so we're actually standing in front of a Play Choice 10 right now. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool, right? So I think it is. I'm going to talk a little bit about it. If you want to kick over to, or you could, we could just keep it on, on this camera for now, and you could toggle it back and forth. But sure. So this was a machine that I picked up about a week ago. Uh, these are pretty hard to come by because, you know, there were a lot of them made. It's just that they were kind of hard to come by right now because Nintendo is such like a, you know, just a nostalgic brand in general. So if you do find these, it's pretty mm -hmm. rare that you find them. It's also really rare if you find them with all 10 games. So the games are interchangeable. Justin, we'll talk about that in a little bit. But mm -hmm. we're actually going to, after I showcase the system a little bit, we're going to show you behind it and go in so you can see the hardware. Because, you know, some people would think, okay, well, they just stuck a Nintendo in there. That's not what they did. There's nope. specialized hardware in there that runs mm -hmm. RAM, ch uh, ROM chips, and those ROM chips, very similar to an NES cart, are actually running the game ROMs, which is really cool. And then one of the things that you'll notice if you stand, if you, um, Justin, if you want to kick it over to the other camera, yeah. Uh, one of the things you may notice here, sorry while I move the mic, one thing that you may notice is this timer up in the right-hand corner. Now, what this timer is, is this is actually when you were to put in quarters in the system, you're basically you're paying to play a certain amount of time on a certain game. And then if you look, there's actually, the way they did this is kind of interesting. They, I'm gonna move the microphone just a tiny bit. Uh, they have a button here that you're not gonna really be able to see that says select channel. So mm -hmm. each game is considered a channel. And so once you put in quarters, you're allowed to move up and down this. If you don't have quarters in, it just goes to attract mode and it starts playing, you know, one of the games. So the 10 games this one has as Super Mario Brothers 2, as Mike Tyson Punch Out, Double Dragon, you guys can see that. But yep. uh, you would almost think, and you go in front of it, you would move the joystick to select the game. You don't. You actually select it with these little select game mm -hmm. uh, menus right here. Now, the cool thing is, if you let's say that I wanted to play, uh, I'll select Super Mario Brothers. Let's say I wanted to play Super Mario Brothers. I'd hit the enter button. Now, when I'm in the game, I can actually hit enter and hold it again, and it'll show me how to play that game. Now, there was other nice. versions of the Play Choice 10 that had two monitors. If you had the two monitor system, it would actually display this on the monitor above the marquee. Well, actually, it'd be above. It'd be like a monitor above here, and then there's a marquee above that. So if I hit enter again, it just gives me instructions on how to play. Mm -hmm. if, I hit enter, if I hit enter and hold it, it actually brings you back to that game. And yeah. if I want to, like, but the cool thing is, let's say I put quarters in here, Justin, but I'm like, oh man, I'm done playing Super Mario Brothers. I can hit the reset button all the way to the right and it goes back to the select screen menu. Yeah. Yeah, it's so pretty, it's pretty nice. cool. I, yeah. The, um, the joysticks are also pretty interesting. They're like these little, they look like they'd be a pain in the butt. Now, the thing is about these is a lot of the arcades that you, if you find these in arcades and people aren't greasing these regularly, they get a little sticky. So they get a little hard to maneuver. And on this one in particular, I'm going to have to replace the left one player because the, if, I don't know if you can hear it, Justin, but on the, on the, 
uh, this one moves oh, really freely. Yeah. This one's like a little sticky. So th- this one, it, it, it doesn't interact too bad with the <clears> gameplay, but, and then you can't see this. You'll see it in a little bit, but there's a button that I have installed for coins. So mm-hmm. instead of, you, you could put coins in this. It's actually fully functional for coins. Um, the other thing you'll notice is right here is where your speaker is mounted. There's a speaker mounted behind this. And the funny thing is when I got this, Justin, the marquee mm-hmm. was, can you see the marquee, by the way? Is that no, in no. this shot? You'd have to, oh, we'd have to do the long shot and you'd have to move. Okay, so maybe do that real quick so you yeah. can see the marquee. So yeah, if you look at the marquee really fast, um, the marquee was actually a fluorescent tube. A lot of these had flu- fluorescent tubes. Almost every <laughs> full-size arcade machine that I've come across lately, the, the marquee light is always out. Mm-hmm. I don't know, just people don't want to replace them or whatever. Um, but this one had a fluorescent bulb, and I had a hard time finding those fluorescent bulbs. So what I did is I put an LED. They sell LED replacement fixtures for the, for the fluorescent bulbs, so that's what I did there. But I was thinking, Justin, maybe I could show... Uh, I'll play a little bit of Mike Tyson's Punch-Out so you guys can Do see it. the gameplay. Yeah, and the other thing, too, <clears throat> hey, maybe you could talk to him a little bit about the quality of the video of this because yeah. it looks amazing, and you're you're my, uh, you're my way better at that stuff than me, but uh, you could probably explain that a little easier than me. Yeah, what's what's nice about the, the Play Choice 10, the reason why it looks so great is it's not exactly the same uh, as the Nintendo. <clears throat> The, the picture processing unit that's on it is different. It actually has native RGB out, whereas the original Nintendo natively can only do uh, composite and, of course, RF. Um, there are mods out there that allow you to do RGB on an NES, but technically the chip itself was never intended to do it. It's kind of a hack that allows you to do it. And so this is that's why if you look at this... The, it, it's pristine quality here because it's going RGB directly into the the arcade tube here. Keep in mind, Justin. The thing that's interesting about this is uh, the glass on a Play Choice Ten is tinted. Oh, really? Yeah, the glass is tinted, so you're actually yeah. viewing this yeah. through a tinted. Come on, do I, it. I, I... Get him, get him. You have to wait until it's like 42 seconds, and then you punch him just at the right spot, and then he, and then he knocks out. That's it. Go for this. Okay, right. Go for it. Boom. Oh, come on, Ralph. It's like you've never played this game before. In the stomach, dude. Dodge in the stomach. You can do this. Dodge and hit him in the stomach. Boom. Stomach. Hold on. I'll do it next time. Relax. Um, oh, one of my favorite things about one of my favorite things about this game, though, is like you start to learn the patterns of the game. I realized it was funny. I called Justin the other day. I'm like, crap. I, who was the guy that I could never? I, I actually forgot how to fight fight with him. It was the was it King King Hippo? You forgot, you know, how to dodge him and hit him right in the belly. Oh, there you go. Come on, come on. If you don't beat him in the first round, I'm gonna be so disappointed in you. There you go. What is going on? Is this game harder? This game's harder in the arcade. Because Glass Joe I normally... think you're just being a jerk. No, no, no. Check it out. If, <laughs> if, if you use the... What is it called? The star power? It, doesn't he knock down right away? No. He doesn't, actually. I thought on the NES he does. Well, he does when I do it. See? So there you well, go. maybe you have some special Justin move that you do. I can usually do the 42 there we go. second I think knockout. that's a TKO, right? You got him? I think so. I think that's TKO. Yeah. Dude, that's great. That's great. You know what I always thought was weird is um, you look really goofy here on the screen, but then when you're no, in the normal... You look goofy, dude. <laughs> What's wrong with you? But uh, how many people, I, I since I can't see the chat, I mean, how many people love this game? I mean, I love this game. To this yeah. day, this yeah, game has us, stood the test of time. Yes, if you love this game. You know, this is the Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, right? This is not Punch-Out. This is Mike Yeah, Tyson's yeah, no, this out. is Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, yeah. This is... Um, this this is this is actually the game that got me back into retro gaming because somewhere around 2010 11 I started emulating and I had you know flat panel screens and I was just learning that there's ah, no shoot. there's no way you can beat Tyson if you have lag like it's it I I, I guess you could but come I had, on I had tremendous I, lag oh my gosh I'm so I was like. I'm playing. In front, I mean, I'm using the excuse of my microphone, but it is really hard because I'm standing right in front oh, of it. Oh sure, uh huh. You got to dodge and hit him. Dodge. There, there, there. Okay, there you go. All right. There we go. Um, there you go. So, anyways, we'll. I, I could keep playing Punch Out, or we could check out a couple of the other games really quick. I was thinking about putting Contra on really yeah, fast. Yeah, let's do Contra. Come on. 
All right, so we hit reset. Now, keep in mind, if I had put quarters in and I still have time, I, I can play whatever games I want. So I'm going to go over to Contra. I'm going to enter on Contra. Uh, Contra, actually, this is where I'm noticing that the joystick needs to be fixed because look how good it looks. And I also was wondering if the... I tried the up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA start. Yeah. And it didn't seem to work, but I think it's because it's really hard to do it with this joystick because it is it is sticky. Yeah. So I got to fix this joystick. I actually ordered one already. I was surprised at how many places had the parts for this. Uh, there are several places. There's a bunch of mods for it, too, which is really cool. Really? What, what type of mods can you do on it? Um, there's a mod where you can hook up regular Nintendo controllers. There's a mod where you can hook up the Zapper. Um, there's a mod where you can hook up a regular NES. Nice. Nice. Yeah, I did see the game link, right? Someone was talking about that before where they actually, someone built, built an adapter where you can put just normal NES. Oh, look at that. You even crossed the bridge, dude. I don't, I don't have any interest in, I don't have any interest in, uh, in doing the, um, like putting a regular NES in it though. I want to keep this. I mean, this, this should be the way it is. I yeah, would never yeah. put an NES in it. I would feel like that. To be fair, it's a downgrade. Like, yeah, totally. I mean, it would only be if you broke the parts. If you broke the parts, then I would do an NES RGB and do the NES RGB. At that point, it's. I bet you could make it work. There's you, so many. Uh, you'd so, have to do so it with like is, an EverDrive or something and wire it up. This game, dude, I would play this game in my basement at home yeah. forever. I mean, I love this. This is one of my first. Yeah. I don't know if it was my first, but I definitely played a ton of this with my friends. I mean, we would play Contra all day long. Yeah, dude. And I the weird thing. I Sorry, remember, so I was renting games in the in the late '80s, and this was one that I like. I don't think I ever returned, or like I, when I did return, I owed a lot of money, and eventually, well, you know, I never. Why went are you to stealing jail, games so. from Blockbuster? Well, I didn't mean to. It was just like, but I do remember, it was like we lived in the country, and no, we, ha we had Contra, and there was an issue where like I didn't have the key to the house yet. But I got off. Oh, come on! When I got home from school, my parents weren't home yet. So I was supposed to, like, wait. We lived in the country, and it was like, they were like, play outside till we get home type of thing. And I was like, no, I want to go inside and play Contra. So I'd leave the house um, with the one of the windows unlocked. Oh, dude. And then, then I would get in, sneak in, and then I'd play Contra. Dude, you know what's crazy? I don't know if you've ever played the arcade version. I hate the arcade version. The arcade... Oh, my mm -hmm. God. Come All right, on. anyways, that was sad. So the arcade version, I can't stand. I don't know why. It's got way better graphics, but I just don't like it. I just don't like the arcade version. So the other game that was on here that I like... I Dude, I don't know why. I know that there are a lot of retro game uh, channels that cover this game, but I never put two and two together. I played this game oh, I know. so much yes. as a kid. Let, let's do the thing. I was telling you when I called you before. Go to go to Ragar. Let's see if I can I can walk you through the glitch from my memory. So you got to beat this level, right? Oh man, this is taking me back, dude. Like I haven't I haven't played Ragar. Can't you like do the thing where you bounce on the top of them? Where yeah, you I think so. Yeah. It's been a really long time, dude. Yeah, I, don't I think know. you bounce and why it stuns them. Not, why have I not? Can you bounce? This? Jump on that. Oh, yes. Yeah, you can. Why have I not played this recently? I know, but the weird thing is I never put two and two together that this was a game I played a ton of. When people would say Rygar, I guess I just forgot. Like, I just forgot about the game. Yeah. And I forgot the name and everything, but I was like, oh my gosh, I remember playing it for so long. And I, I remember the reason why is my parents didn't have air conditioning. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, well, I just might as well go downstairs in the basement and just play games. And I, I think I rented this and I just played it like the whole weekend. Yeah, I... I absolutely love this the game. The music gets a little annoying after a while, though, to be honest. <laughs> what? So what are those? Those are like rats? Is that right? I can't I don't remember. know. I never got what those are. Like, those are clearly turtles, but I don't know what those other oh, things turtles? are. I thought they were rodent, rodents of unusual size. R really? They look like turtles to me, <laughs> but... Are you joking? This is when you're joking. All right, never mind. Princess Bride. Man, this is okay. So there's the play choice 10. I don't know that I can keep playing this game though without the annoying sound, unless you oh, want to just, just go in here. Okay, here we go. So go up. No, no, you gotta I mean, keep go going, up. keep going, keep going, keep going. You just made me die, dude. Go or almost die. What do you mean go up? No, no, I'm sorry. I'll tell you when the, when the screen changes, you go to an overhead. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you. Just keep going. You're almost there. <laughs> so I'm yeah. almost dead though. Look, I only have one health right now you could do it you could do it all right hold on oh, 
are. So they, they have a Play Choice 10 in Missouri. Go, go up right here. No, no, no. Whatever. Just get past the stage. Oh, where are you telling me to go, though? I, 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 I think this door, some dudes just tells you some lame thing, and then you leave. Okay, then I'm go. pretty sure. Just get out of here. Yeah, he's like, oh, by the way, dude, uh, I've oh, been yeah, sitting yeah. on this. Hey, man, um, <laughs> I've been totally sitting on this, like, stone pillar for a really long time. I don't know how I'd actually get off of it, but, uh, <laughs> and why did they, like, not, is it supposed to be lighting effects where there's, like, half the screen just not drawn? I don't know why that yeah, is. Yeah, there's, like, a, there's, like, a lamp above where the door is, and there's a lamp above that In the guy. Green Mountain lies the entrance to <laughs> Garlaws. <laughs> Thanks, bro. <laughs> All right, keep Whoever going. Gar Garlaws you're, you're is. You're almost where I want you to be, and if you can't get there, that's fine. But we're going to get there. If, if I die, I'm not, I'm not restarting, so okay, just know fine. that. Man. See, this is the weird thing. So... Remember, I, I was getting into. Okay, you're saying out. go all the way over to the right and not go up. You just, you just, no, no, no. I mean, you get past this stage. You want to get past this. Oh stage. crap! Does this guy go down? All right. So, you think I'm gonna get past this stage with one health left? I, I think doubt so. it. I so. <laughs> no, I'm not going to, dude. <laughs> so here's the thing about this. I, I thought I was super into Super Nintendo games as a kid. I absolutely remember just loving the Super Nintendo games. But as I started collecting games a couple years ago, I found myself buying the original NES games instead of the Super Nintendo. And that may be because the price of the Nintendo games are cheaper, they're more plentiful, okay. easier to collect. But then I started realizing I have so much more attachment to the 8-bit games. But it's like it's weird because like 8-bit is not my thing, 16-bit is. So what's going on? I'm like living a lie. I don't know why are you lying to yourself. I guess I'm lying to myself. And so the idea of having a Play Choice 10 is is something I really want to have, mainly because it was an arcade system that was across the street from me, and I used to go there and play it all the time. And we were talking about this earlier this week, where what are we doing? What are we doing buying all these arcade one-up cabinets, you know? If you dare approach Garba found atop this mountain. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. He's so got to have more to say than that, right? I don't know. He's, he, maybe he's just like. You but know. that's like one sentence. Okay. I, th I think that's oh it. Oh my gosh. Just leave. <laughs> so but that's the thing. <laughs> but, but where am I supposed to go now? I don't know. He's supposed to go up. I left haven't played this up. forever. I have no. I, I can't get up. up there. Yeah, you can. You can do it. You can do it, Ralph. You got to bounce on the rat and jump up to the next pillar. It's not a rat, dude. It's a. Oh. Okay. It's not a rat. So, it's a turtle. Yeah, yeah. Joe Sabos just said the one-ups are just a gateway. But here's the thing: what I'm talking about, we're at least the the one ups that I bought are the ones that like. Wait, this is where it just came from, isn't it? I think so. It, it's the ones that have meaning to me. Do you know what I mean? It, it's like they're extra special to me. If the game, Wait, what's has extra meaning. special? Oh, the game. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, like the game, you know, itself. And so, but there are a handful of cabinets that I don't know if Arcade One Up is ever gonna gonna do, and the Play Choice Ten is one of them. We could, you know, what if? they did do it it would be really cool and i was think we were talking but about do you think that but here's my only thing and we didn't even talk about this is do you think that people won't want it because there's the nes classic you know what i mean like yeah i mean i don't know it'll be hard. dude i totally don't know where i'm going you, you gotta go left more he says go west and then north yeah so go. i left. remember this bugging the crap out of me as a kid <laughs> all right how much longer are we gonna play this are people even caring <laughs> if i go play up, this go or up, should go i up. We're just going to show them one thing, and then we'll bring it back. What are we showing them? Just just, just check it out, dude. I know, but I feel like your memory might be a little faded. Fine, whatever. Just get as far as you can. Oh, crap. All right, west and then north. I it mean, I'm going the point. The NES Classic isn't being made anymore. Do you think I need so... to go more north? You mean to go more west, and then you... No. There you yep. go. Go there up I right am. here. There's there north. Is. Yeah, there you go. Okay. But now I feel like I need to go even more north, right? Probably. There's no ladder here. I didn't know this stream turned into Can Ralph Beat Ragar, but... <laughs> Wait, did I go in this door? I don't yeah, think so. No, no, go into the door. All right, let's see. From this you... point, you can't go on without a crossbow. Are you going to okay, give me one? We're going we're gonna to do a vote. Everyone should... Uh, everyone hates the zeros and ones. Okay, let's do... Pitbull is there. He's about to be like, do not type in one. Well, wait. He said, oh, I can't go any further without a crossbow. Well, I don't have one. We were going to show the insides. Do you guys want to see the inside of the piece, uh, the Play Choice 10 here? Or do you want to yeah, see it's more got of some really cool. It's got some really cool tech, so I just want to show you guys. 
Yeah, I, I think I, I bet they want to see the inside. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna cancel out Rygar, okay? All right. I have to. I have to. I'm gonna. I'm gonna try to practice good behavior, and I, I. It would. It would be a good idea to power this down when we get into the back. I don't have to, but I think it would be a good idea to do that. So, Justin, what I'm gonna do is, I have to turn the cabinet around. I gotta adjust some lighting and stuff, yep. and then I'll. And then I'll be right back. So, if you if you don't mind, you might need to kill this mic just so that we yep. don't hear me rum, rumbling around. All right, I'll be back Sounds in good. a minute. Sounds good. So check this out, guys. So if you check out the Wikipedia, this is what people were talking about before. The Play Choice Ten here. Um, actually the wiki page is really cool. It talks about it. It does mention about, um, how the PPU outputted, um, RGB natively. So that, that's pretty cool. And then it lists the 52 games that were available for the play choice, uh, 10. So I, I was just thinking like the, the other arcade cabinets that, um, Nintendo came out with were like, you know, like the versus cabinets. And it would be really cool if we could get like, you know, an arcade one-up versus cabinet, because because maybe they couldn't get Donkey Kong or maybe they can't get Mario, but could they get like Mario versus? Like those arcade ROMs, they were different. The versus ones, right? They were kind of like ROM hacks of the original NES game of Super Mario Brothers, for example. The game was slightly harder. Like they were trying to make it where the um, you know they're trying to make it where the the game would take more quarters. And so I was kind of thinking about that. Like, those games are not on the NES Classic, right? Like, maybe they're on Switch. I think maybe one or one of them is on one of the emulators out there. It was like a, what, like a Wii disc or something. But could Arcade 1UP reach out to Nintendo and say, hey, could we do um, some of these actual arcade ROMs that Nintendo came out with that were slightly different from the ones that were on the console? And maybe they could get away with that. So... We're going to check in on Ralph now and see how he's doing. Hey, Ralph. Oh, my gosh. Look at this. Okay. Yeah. All right. So so what we're looking at here is pretty interesting. So there's it doesn't use JAMA. It's got its own proprietary connector for the... Um, you know, for all the controls and everything. So that's what you're seeing right here. Mm -hmm. But behind this is actually where you find the main board. So the main board is, is what effectively is running these Nintendo games. So what you do is you just... Uh, you just pop these little clips off. I, I tried to get it a little bit started. Now, I only went in here for a second. So when you pop that off, this thing moves out of the way. And it, it oh, shoot, I just disconnected something. Oh, you just ruined your PlayChoice 10. Uh, actually, no, I think that's already disconnected, I think. Oh, no, it's not. All right. Oh, no, yeah, no, it, it yeah, has, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, it has to connect over there. So, sorry, check it out. So you pull this out. It's almost like it was made to be worked on. Yeah, you pull this out, and that can you see? So cool. Can you see these little? I'm gonna move it in small, smaller. Can you see those little microchips right there? Yeah, you know, all yeah. in a row. Yep. That's your game. Oh, put your hand next to them. Like point to each one. Yeah. So this one okay. is Super Mario Brothers Two. They're labeled. I so see. they're pretty yeah. long. That's your whole game, and then all of them are labeled back there. You just have to, you know. I'd have to actually move it back there, but actually, one thing I'm gonna I want to make sure I put this back on. But uh, yeah, so I ordered a couple of new games. Um, and I think I told you what I ordered, but now I can't remember what I ordered. I ordered a couple new ones. So right there on the on the, on the right is that dip switches? Uh, it's hard for me to get in the frame. And hold on. Yeah, it looks like there are. But here's the cool thing: when yep. we put this back, I want to show you. Look at what was in. I'm gonna move the the cabinet. So this is really cool. Why I think this is such a great find. I'm gonna move this. We'll we'll go. We'll get back to this in a second. But I'm gonna put that just like that and let this rest. So sometimes when you get these arcade cabinets, you find some kind of hidden gems, like things that people left or, and it's pretty crazy to me because yeah. I wonder where this was because they left um, oh. some of the original paperwork. So I'm going to move the camera. I don't know if you can see this, but they left some of the original paperwork. So they actually left the diagram um, that has basically all the schematic diagrams, which oh. probably talk about those dip switches. Yeah. yeah. So this is the wiring diagram. So you can see like there's the fluorescent lamp that I replaced. I don't know if you can read that, Justin. Let me know if you can. Um, Not interesting. Let's see if it shows the dip switches. Let, show close to the camera all the way to the right. So the bottom bottom right. Wait, this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the like whose name is on that? That's usually like, you know. Can you it says in? drawn by T H I B I N O, and it and the date on this is three eight three eighty eight. That's cool, man. And it says Nintendo of America. That's really cool. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff in here. It has all the diagrams, some some troubleshooting stuff in here. 
Um, let's see. Oh my God. And I think even from, yeah, it's really cool. So we'll, we'll, we'll definitely, I'll probably take screenshots of this, this, yeah. and maybe post it on, on, um, the community page on, mm-hmm. and then, and there's some other stuff too. I don't know what this is. Oh, so check this out. Play choice 10 authorized by Nintendo game number. I don't know if that's the number. Can you read this? Can you see no, it? No, no. Uh, you can't see it? Tilt it a little bit. I, I, read the number to us. <laughs> it no. says... 009508 but it says this play choice game is authorized by nintendo of america incorporated i this this is the first time i'm seeing all this stuff i literally haven't really opened the back of it yet that's awesome man so that's really cool so it's like a sticker just saying like hey this is funny (laughs) this you're gonna laugh at of course this would be in a nintendo cab (laughs) can you see that (laughs) of course of course we'd have this at the Nintendo cab. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah so uh, you're going to go to jail if you do anything. It says, <laughs> basically it says, federal law provides severe civil and criminal penalties for the unauthorized reproduction, distribution, or exhibition of copyrighted audiovisual works and video games. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. That is very Nintendo. Yep. Huh. Okay, cool. Let me see. There's one other thing in here, and I don't know what this is, so let's see what this is. Oh, dude, there's the dip switch settings. Cool. Oh, Can cool. So basically, yeah, so so let's see. Um, you can tell how many seconds they get per coin. Okay. So you can adjust that. You can adjust the attract music if you want attract music. Someone shut that, or they have it on, actually. It does do attract music. Very cool. There's something called prime time bonus. It says, prime, oh, when wow. using prime time bonus for two coins... Huh, I don't know what that is. Oh, like they get some kind of... Bu- oh, I get it. Oh, that's cool, dude. So like if you want to change it, like maybe in the arcade, you would say like between the hours of like two and four, your credits are worth more. But then they would have to know what time it oh, is. Oh, no, maybe that's not. Primetime bonus percentage. Oh, maybe it's based on... I'm not sure, dude. That's weird. <laughs> oh, I just made that up. Never mind. I just made that up. I don't know. We'll have to look up what that means. I don't know what yeah. that means. Because it says prime time bonus for four coins. Or maybe it means if you put in two credits, you get extra time. Because it says prime time bonus for two coins. I'm not yeah, sure. It, it sounds like if you put in two coins, you get yet even more time than you would if you did them individually. Yeah. Like that wouldn't be hard to like set up, right? But the yeah, like, no. time and, thing, and that, the other, that was all the other, th- the other thing that's really cool <laughs> is is uh <laughs> the you guys probably can't see it i'll see if i tilt the camera up do you see anything if i tilt the camera up do you yeah. see like the bottom of the crt yep so the 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 manufacture date on the crt is right here this thing was manufactured in 1984 oh yeah i think that's that whole thing right like where nintendo actually so that cabinet itself was made in like 88 but the crt was in 84 that matches up with that whole history where nintendo actually made too many crts right like they went all in on the verses and they ended up making too many so that's why they came up with like pipe yeah uh, uh, punch out that had two screens and then play choice that had two screens because literally they were trying to find usage for for the crt so i wonder if that that's one of the original crts from 84 but then was repurposed to the play choice 10 yeah, I will tell you this though the the screen looks amazing and it's in really good shape though. Like it, mm-hmm. if I compare it to my Street Fighter, my Street Fighter looks like someone took a dump on it. This thing <laughs> is like in really good shape. Um, and then if you look the back, the coin mechs are working. But if you see just now, if you can see my finger there, yep. mm-hmm. but I'm pointing at that that micro switch. Yeah, I actually wired one of these coin doors to to use that switch so I can add time that way instead of you know, putting quarters in. But this is all still wired for quarters. It works. But I just, it's a little quick modification that I did. But the only thing I did to this so far was I re- replaced the marquee uh, with a better marquee and, and that's it. But I'm fascinated personally by the board. Yeah. I, I just think this is Yeah, really pull it out. Cool. I can point out what I see. Do you want to pull it out all the way? Yeah, yeah. Do you want to pull bit. it all? All right. Give me one sec. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Sorry. So all day today, well, Ralph and I have been just kind of chatting, and I've been like fiddling around the guitar, and I all of a sudden realize we're on a live show. Um, Justin, give me one sec. Come on, man. I'm trying to move. I, I'm literally on my floor in my all right. Fine, do your game thing. Room, I'll play so hold on. No, no, I'm good. I'm good. I got it. I got it. I got it. <laughs> all right. So check it out. From my glance, if you look, there's a big PCB 40 bit 40 pin that has a uh, heat sink on top of it. Right in the middle of the board, I'm pretty sure that's the PPU. 
the picture processing unit, it, they're putting an extra heat sink on it because it's going to get hot. It's handling all the graphics, right? And then if you look, p use your hand, point it, point at stuff, and let me, let me, let me. Your, it's your really hand dusty, and there's like what's it called all over it. So. Oh my! Look at the guts there. Yeah. So there, there you go. So you can see. Can you see the game title names or no? No, I can't. Here, see I'll that. see if I, I'll see if I can get the camera on an angle that you can see it. Yep. Can you see it now? Yeah. So. So check it out. If, if you the, look, that says Mario Brothers. Yep. This one's not labeled for some so reason. See that? See that eight pin? The eight pin, a little eight dip at the bottom. Bottom middle of the board. Use your finger near all the cobwebs. I think. I Wait, think that's what I'm pointing to right here, or this. No, I can't see your finger. So you got ROM chips, whatever. You got EPROMs. It's got the actual game on it, whatever. You got a little controller board, probably doing the memory mapping. But then yeah. there's there's some little little capacitors there. And then you have an 8-pin. That's a lockout chip, right? They totally put the lockout chip on these games. You know, it's doing the whole handshake between all the games and the board. I don't know if they would go that far on the arcade. I haven't researched it, but that looks like the NES 10. D aren't you guys, Aren't you like a 10S? little amazed that this thing looks this good for the age that it is, though? I mean, this looks really good for Actually, the age that it is. Yeah. I mean, think about it. the The PCB's date on it so, is nineteen eighty eight. So Ralph, I can see yeah. why this uh, this board failed. It says it's made in Japan. What are we talking about Doc? All the great stuff is made from Japan. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it looks so good. They really knew what they were doing, and these things last a long time. When it comes so, to the actual yeah, I mean, it's great. Board. So I'm gonna put this back in real quick. So I'm gonna move the camera over. I'm trying to be really delicate with this because obviously. Um, you know, this is a, this is a collector's item yeah. at this point. So I want to make sure I get it all back into place. So it's right yeah, you have 10 games. It's filling up all 10 slots, right? Yep. Didn't you say you bought another one? You bought, um... I bought, I bought two games. I bought, um, shoot. I told you what I bought. Now I forgot. Russian attack, right? Yeah. Russian attack, which is funny. I think that's funny that they called it rush in attack instead <laughs> of Russian attack. I think that's <laughs> Nintendo trying to be like, I know what we'll call it. Yeah, right. It won't seem very political if we call it rush in attack. Yeah, it's kind of like but, Donkey uh, Kong, right? Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> so you just push that back in and then that's pretty much it. Like I it should just fire back up no problem, but but yeah, so I'm excited. So what we'll do is on one of the shows coming up in the next couple of weeks, I'll I'll we'll replace a, one of the memory one of the ROM chips with a different game and we'll see uh, you know, that process. I have yeah. a hard time getting these pins back on for some reason. Like these don't want to go on very easily they for some reason in. so while you're doing that check this uh, out i'll, I'll uh, show show some more stuff so the play choice 10 i wanted to show that off uh if you check out retro rgb we had him on the show yesterday it was pretty cool he has a section that talks about the pc 10 um namely uh, there was this mod where people would take you know essentially hopefully broken play choice 10 and they would this was a long time ago this isn't really needed anymore but they would remove the pcb or i'm sorry the ppu from the um this is like 10 years ago they would remove it from the play choice 10 and put it in a nintendo because it is technically compatible and then there was extra wires that you can pull out the actual rgb signal and and create like an rgb mod and so you could get much higher quality but none of that is really needed anymore because if you check out um tim worthington he created this um nes rgb mod which what it does is it's got an FPGA on it, and it actually puts the PPU in a debug mode. It's not really intended. It's undocumented. Um, but it puts it into a debug mode that actually causes the RGB signals to be pushed out through data lines um, that were, like, for, for debugging purposes. And technically, it's not the RGB signal, but you can derive the RGB signal from it. And that's what kicked off this, um, this RGB kit. And then later, the high-def NES came out, which uses exactly the same hack. And so the high def NES is is using just a standard Nintendo PPU, putting it into that debug mode, and is able to derive the the raw RGB signal directly from the NES PP, PPU, and then upscales it with an FPGA, no frame buffer, uh, to full you know 720 1080p. So it's all digital, and and the quality on that on an LCD is is the best you can get um an nes sat that that i've seen it it's i mean you you can look at the nes classic or or say like the um T nintendo switch emulation which is pretty good the emulation is is really good and nintendo makes the best palette out there for getting you know getting the nintendo to actually the games to actually look 
the way they originally did on a CRT, but on a flat screen. Um, but the high def NES is, 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 I think it's better. Like it is one of the best ways to, to play NES. Now, those of you that don't know, the NES RGB was written by this guy named Kevin Horton, which is the engineer for analog. So if you've seen those $500 Nintendos um, that are like full FPGA, it's the same developer. And so that's why the analog NES HD technology is so good. It's, it's this guy that's been doing arcade and stuff for, I don't know, more than 10 years or so. 15 probably at this point. Anyway, so I wanted to show that nugget of information while we were talking about um, the play choice, because it's all related. If you wanted to get this super high quality technology, this everything I'm talking about with high def NES, it all started with Play Choice 10. The Play Choice 10 introduced that it was possible to get a raw RGB signal from from the Nintendo architecture, and uh, that's the journey there. So, Ralph, how we doing? I'm gonna show the show your back now. No, no, I have the ca other camera back set up. If you if you want to get back to the Play Choice, I think I have it set up. Yeah, so uh, what do you guys think? What do you guys think of this play? There was a stand? quarter. I just looked in the um, oh, dude, coin box. Oh, dude, you bought it, and you, and you made some money already. Yeah, there's a quarter in the coin box. <laughs> that was kind of cool. <laughs> that is good. What year yeah. is that quarter from? It's actually 2019, I looked. Oh. <laughs> so I thought I was excited. But they must have had, I guess they were just using quarters at the place I got it from. So it's interesting. The place I got it from was actually, I can go back to, you know what, let's go back to the other camera. Yeah. I'll turn so you don't see my back. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Whoa. Uh, yeah, the place I bought it from is actually a game store that so sells retro games, and they actually um, they have arcades inside the store. And he's just trying to, like, he just rotates through the games, and, you know, he just happened to be selling it, and, I don't know, I was pretty excited about it, and it was a pretty decent price. So, yeah, it's cool stuff. But I'm, like, super pumped on this. I just think it'd be interesting to go through and change the games. Hey, Justin, how far down can you see? Because I wanted to show these awesome... There's something that came in the mail today that you don't know about. It came literally, no joke, before this episode, Kim and I walked to the mailbox, and this came today. Can I show you? How far down does it go? I'm, don't get weird, but how far does, down does the camera <laughs> yeah, go? Like, give, like Stop keep, when... Keep going, far? keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. About there, right there, right there. Okay, check this out. Okay. <laughs> what are you doing? Can you see those? Oh, my God. You picked those up. <laughs> yeah that's cool man i guess if you're gonna show it off in an episode this is the episode ah, to do it in. my back <laughs> oh my that's so God. sad i've been so like i've been so like just not moving around the past i'm sure a lot of you guys have i've been like not moving much actually kim and i went it's really nice here in arizona right now kim and i went on a hike today it's the most i've moved in like two weeks <laughs> and the funny thing is they shut down the trails right after because they because people couldn't distance themselves far enough from each other and that's like guys i don't know i don't know that's pretty easy to do but they said people were getting too close to each other, so they shut the trails down. Wow. That's yeah, really crazy. So, how, so I feel a little detached because I haven't been able to be on the chat. So what's going on? Like, what are people talking about? They want to know how much you spent. You got you to tell us. You know I never really talk about that usually. <laughs> what did he spend? What did he spend? What did he spend? What did Ralph spend? <laughs> what is... <laughs> um... Well, uh, typically they'd go for like fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars. Uh, he actually let it go for twelve hundred. So that's actually a pretty good price for something like this. Oftentimes, if you try to go for one, they're going to be about fifteen hundred bucks. Well, that's that's good to know because there's one near me that's fourteen hundred. So. Yeah, and uh, and the thing is, some people will let them go without all the games, so that sucks. So some people will give you one with like five games, and it's like right. the games are actually really expensive. So the game ROMs on on at least like eBay. Mm -hmm. If you look on eBay, people are usually selling them for about a hundred bucks. Okay. So I mean, so, so it can get pretty expensive. So it's good if you can find one that already has you know all the, you know all the uh, ROMs already in it. Um, the one thing is, dude, I forgot to upload the video, and maybe if you can entertain people for a couple minutes, I could probably do it. But I did pick up another arcade machine what? this week. What? Yeah. Are, are you... I, I told you that. Uh, no. And we did fix, by the way, I, I know I, we did fix that, that whole, the, whoever did, thank you so much for watching that episode if you did the electrocution episode. But I was able to take the Street Fighter 2 out of the cabinet, the, the monitor chassis or chassis, <laughs> and... Uh, there was two pins that had just like moved on the board, but they were no longer making solder connections with, um, well, only one was making a connection, but red was no longer making the connection. So I pushed the pin forward. 
I didn't do it properly, Justin, but I got a little solder on there, soldered it back on, and it, this thing looks awesome now. Like, I'll sh I'm burping Oh, God, again. you're burping. I'll show, <laughs> I'll, show, I'll show a before and after of that. But if you want, I can... Um, what was the thing I was going to do? Oh, I was going to upload that video really quick. If you can entertain for like, if you want to take me off the screen for a couple what? minutes, I could, what? Okay, we're going to take him off the screen. Welcome to the real One Up Weekly. Hit one if you're here really for me. I mean, this is this is the Justin Takeover show, right? It has been since the beginning. Ralph just doesn't know it. My entire plan, the, the, the true honesty of it is I hated Ralph. Like, like I would put out a video and no one would watch it, right? Like, I'd get, like, a few thousand views, maybe 5,000 views, you know? This guy would pop out a video and get 20,000, 30,000, 40,000 views. And one day, I was all like, I know how to beat him. I'll join him. And then I was, like, slowly creeped into his channel. And slowly, eh, probably the last four months, I want to say, the majority of the videos that Ralph puts out Produced by console kits, that's right. He's at the point where he just calls me and he's like, all right, what's the next video? And I'm like, all right, this is what you should do in your next video. You should do an electrocution cam. And he's like, really? And I'm like, yeah, it'll be really good. Anyway, half of what I'm saying is true and half of it is because I know that Ralph is going to come on the show. I don't even, I'm looking at what he's doing. I'm like, he's gone. Like, where did he go? Oh, wait, there he is. He's way down there. We can, we can like make fun of him now. See, oh, look at I hear you. <laughs> oh, crap. I was sure, sure that he couldn't hear us. All right, let me get him off the screen here. But what do you guys think of the Play Choice 10? I'm thinking of picking one up, you know, but I got all these cabinets. And part of me is like, what am I going to do with all the cabinets? Are you guys interested in picking up actual arcade cabinets? I would love to know. Like, maybe you can tell me a yes. Do you own a full size arcade cabinet? Or do you simply just own the Arcade 1-Ups or the Legends Ultimate? Let me know. We'll read through uh, what you have here, and uh, we'll start a little conversation here. So I honestly was looking for one in my area, and it was like a two, three-hour drive. Not too bad, right? That I could pick up a Play Choice for $1,400. Looks like it's in really good condition. I was going to text the guy and see if he's interested. But the hard part is I'm, I don't really want to travel right now. You know, like, is now the right time to be picking up arcades? But but part of me is also wondering if, if um, not that I want to take advantage of people, but maybe some people are willing to let go of items a little cheaper. And so, you know, maybe I could offer him a deal and see, you know, see if I can pick up one up. It is one that I've always wanted to own. And although we were talking about how, like, arcade one up may come out with, um, you know, something from Nintendo, they kind of tease that maybe they'll have something, but honestly, I just, I just don't think it's going to happen. So to be able to, you know, pick one up, I think it's going to have to be original arcade. So, um, oh, what's going on here, Ralph? Mr. Mr. Oh, okay. Let me get your audio in here on the floor and i'm just trying to do something so here you probably see me on the floor it's dumb but uh you want to see it real i'm quick? gonna go full screen on you now look at look no, at this you can look see me this. on the floor looking like a loser all okay. right yeah so so all right so this is it I, i'll just play it really quick do it i don't think there's audio so okay we're gonna have to commentary over it i was okay. backing up because i didn't like the way it was coming out so here Welcome we go Welcome to storage wars with it's oh. lethal oh. enforcers that yep that's nice man and the side art is actually in pretty good shape. The, the marquee, of course, doesn't work. But you're never going to guess how much. And the guns, I actually, I'll tell you about the guns in a second. So that's it. It's Lethal Enforcers. Lethal Enforcers. Um, now, the problem is, is that I can't obviously, uh, well, let me stand up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can't power that on in my storage unit. I have this little battery backup. The thing, everyone always asked when I did that video about... Uh, Marvel, Mar the Marvel uh, Special Edition cabinet, how I powered it up in the desert. And I have this little, like, it's sort of like a battery generator. So instead mm -hmm. of a gas generator, it's a battery generator. It has a huge battery in it. Mm -hmm. So you can run a lot of things. It doesn't have enough power to fire up a CRT, though. So you hear it buzzing. But check this out. So I am going to do a video on it, but I'm going to do it when the storage unit closes. So, dude, I was, like, I was scouring the storage unit 
for um, a regular like 110 outlet. I'm like, where are there 110 outlets? Like they have to, like what if someone legitimately needed power? So mm-hmm. I looked up and there's like, I don't know what I was doing. I was like on the ground and I looked up and like diagonal, there's like a security like sign with there's a fire in the building mm-hmm. and there was one outlet right there. And if I brought my ladder there, I could totally plug it in. And there's they're unattended after six o'clock at night. Yep. So I'm going to go in there after six o'clock at night someday this week and fire that up and do a demo. But I did, I did play it. It plays pretty well. There's a couple little weird, like one of the guns looks like maybe it needs some calibration or cleaning or something. But I was surprised at how simplistic that cabinet is. The other thing that's cool is that cabinet, uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but a lot of the gun games, the monitor is actually, the monitor is not in the back. Mm-hmm. The monitor is actually mounted down here. And there's a mirror that's angled like this. So right. you're actually playing the game off of a mirror. I don't know if people know that. Not all gun games are like that, but like Terminator 2 is like that. If you go look up inside of Terminator 2 arcade cabinet, the CRT is actually mounted on the ground. It's like down here. So yeah. the problem with moving those cabinets is they're super... So <laughs> I wish I had a picture of this. I put that in my Jeep and there was like that much of the cabinet hanging out the back of my jeep so the thing was like i had one strap just keeping it in i'm like i'm taking this cabinet so that guy let that cabinet go for 300 dollars. now you're gonna ask me so when people say like can you get arcade cabinets for cheap it works the crt is in really good condition the guns might need a little bit of work like even if you needed a new one you could probably get one for like 50 dollars, a brand new one Mm -hmm. so 300 bucks. You know what I mean? So like, if you really like those games, now keep in mind, it's one game on it, but you probably only, you bought a one up and you have four games on it. Right. And so, I mean, if Mm -hmm. you're into wanting to make that transition over to full size cabinets, you can like, it is possible. So I just, I thought that was kind of cool. $300 is a really good price. And, uh, the other reason why I bought it, Justin, was that, um, if I needed a spare CRT, it's really hard to find a 25 inch CRT and this CRT is in like really good shape. So the CRT alone is probably worth a couple hundred bucks. Mm-hmm. So I just thought, even if I use it for parts, it was worth it. So so I guess it's a requirement to have a storage unit if you're going to buy arcade cabinets. Is that right? So first, before <laughs> I buy the arcade cabinet, I have to go price how much uh, storage units are. Is that is that how it works? P- probably. I mean, look at, can you, I don't know if you can even see the scope of this room. If you guys remember early days of my channel, this room had three arcade one-ups on this wall. Right. Justin, do you want me to turn the camera so you can see what's on this wall now? Because mm-hmm. I don't think you can see all the cabinets here, right? No. Here, I'll move it really okay, fast. Sure. Oh my gosh. Look at what we have. Can you here. see all three of them? Yeah, man. Uh, let me go. Let me Can go. You see all three. Yeah. So now, now let's take it. So I'll tell you the story. Yeah, do it. What? So you want to hear the story about these real quick? Oh, let's do quick stories, man. Okay, and then we and then then we'll then we'll wrap things up. Um, so this cabinet right here, um, it's a, are you just are you distracted if I'm not looking in the camera? Are you cool with that? <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> All right. So this cabinet right here was actually there was an arcade owner. Uh, there's a town north of here called Black Canyon City. This guy used to own arcades all oh, throughout this is Arizona. A long story. No, no, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> he used to he used to own arcades all throughout Arizona, and he bought this for himself personally. So when he was putting this machine in his arcade, he bought an extra one. So this one has never been on location anywhere. It was always in his house. I, I don't know why he sold it for the price he sold it, but he sold this for eight hundred dollars, and it is literally. I've had this one for a while. I just never did a video on it. This is, it's in pristine shape. I mean, it couldn't be any more perfect. The artwork is perfect. If there's any dings on it, it's from me being a bonehead trying to move it into my house myself, which is mm-hmm. really, I'm pissed off at. Mm-hmm. The Street Fighter you guys have seen. And then if you can see toward the end here, the other Street Fighter cabinet, that's a Street Fighter 1 that someone put a Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition marquee on. That one I'm going to turn into a multi cade because someone took the CRT out. I'm not going right. to put a CRT in it. I'm going to I'm going to turn that into something else. So that's kind of the lay of the land when it comes to And then obviously you guys can't see the beast is on this side. So we've got these three full sizes. You have the Play Choice 10, the pinball machine in the back, and then you got the beast. So there's a lot of this 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 room used to be all one-ups. Mm-hmm. So you can kind of see how the tides have turned a bit at least downstairs in the in the game room. This is this office. is where you work, right? So this is like when you're yeah, it's the backdrop calls. of where I work. Yeah. So everyone thinks you're a big nerd, you know? Or at least they know. Pretty much, but I work for a tech company, so they're all pretty nerdy anyway, so they all kind of, they all think it's cool usually. 
Yeah, I feel bad because like where I work, like everyone's way more nerdy than me, so I got a lot of catching up to do. Like I showed you some pictures. I don't know if that's true. Uh, you know, I have a you're very, pretty nerdy, Justin. I have let's, a let's pretty be weak collection compared to the people that I work with. We're talking like their where their their warehouse is in their house, right? Like they have like a three car garage filled with full size arcade cabinets. So I got I got a little catching up to do. Well, dude, I think uh, I think this is the end of the road for tonight. Unless there's some upstairs. questions, in the... you should come. Yeah, upstairs to wrap it up. All right, I'll, all right, I'll, all right, I'll go upstairs. All right, let's. Uh, <laughs> by the way, cleaning this room is going to be a complete nightmare. <laughs> there's laptops and cables and cords everywhere. But hey, that's for the after show. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna go and uh, I'll go upstairs right now. Yep, let's do this. All right, so. To this room. There we go. All right, so when he comes back, we're going to be doing some fun talk as we wrap up the show for the last 10 minutes of the show. It's going to be great because he's coming upstairs, and I promise I won't sing to you. I promise. Even though Ralph wants me to, I'm not going to because that's stupid. I'm not a very good singer. Not a very good. Oh, there he is. Okay, Ralph, it's time. I moved my camera and, um, you can kind of see my chubbiness now. <laughs> I don't it. like that. It's the chubby cam, right? Yeah, it's the chubby cam. All right, so we had some really good questions. It start, there was a lot of people talking, and, and I think some of the really good questions came. Um, my family was saying, can you ask Ralph how much time he spends per week actually playing his <laughs> Well, really man, um, you know, that's the, that's the kind of unfortunate thing. So if there's one thing... If there's one thing that's made me consider stopping doing YouTube, it's just that I have like I I'm really enjoying all of the projects I have, but I don't have enough time to really enjoy them, which is kind of a bummer. So it's not a lot. The good thing is, though, since I've been working from home because it's mandated, uh, you know, during breaks and stuff like I'll go play a game of Street Fighter or I'll go play. Let's say there's 15 minutes between calls like I'll go play. So actually right now from quarantine, I've been playing a lot more. So I, I could say maybe like, I don't know, maybe two full hours of playing per week, um, per week maybe. That's pretty good. Yeah, maybe around that. That's a good question, though. And also my family, thank you for always supporting the channel. You're awesome, and we appreciate that. That's right. How much is your, be how much is your power bill? Um, you know, the funny thing is I don't run the cabinets all the time. So sometimes I turn them on just to look at them, which is weird, but there's something different about the glow of the CRT. And I used to, I do it with my one-ups too. Like I keep these on, actually, I only have two one-ups up here, but, uh, I keep those on too. I think it's just cool. They look cool, but I tend not to do it with the, with the full sizes cause they do draw a lot more power, you know? Yeah. Yeah. My, my, uh, get off my lawn gaming. Yeah. So I'm trying to conserve energy. So yeah, I turn some <laughs> lights off, you know, <laughs> You know, times are tough, right? So, but um, yeah, no, I've been having a lot of fun with it. You know, obviously, you guys have seen a little turn, and so I, I know that um, some some of the people that watch the channel have been watching it for a really long time. I had always said to myself, I started with Mame machines. Mm -hmm. So before art before Arcade One Up came out, I was doing Mame for I don't know fifteen years or so, and I had a cocktail cabinet. I had a couple full size cabinets. And then I kind of like lost, we, you and I have talked about this, Justin, I kind of like just lost, um, not, I didn't lose interest in the hobby. I think life took over. I had kids and it just like, when kids were little, I just didn't have the time. And so I sold a lot of my stuff, but still did emulation from time to time. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm sitting, and I still did story. emulation from time to time. It was a sad, dark time back then. I wished if only I still had my arcade cabinets. But then, only then, life got exciting again. <laughs> Justin? I don't know where you were going. You were supposed to get faster with the guitar. You totally... Then life got exciting again. Retro Ralph came on the scene. And I had tons of time to play. Yeah. <laughs> playing all day. Playing all night. Sometimes I want to pick a fight because I love arcades. All right. 
<laughs> anyway, uh, I think we should end the show <laughs> yeah, always with end just, this. We should just end like, <laughs> let's try one more time. Let's see where improv song can go. All right. Um, hmm. Ralph bought another arcade. <laughs> it's getting really sad. Because every single time we do a one-up weekly show, he says he's bought two or three more. He's got... Why did you make the song sad? Gaming is supposed to be fun. You make me want to open up the door and run. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> Okay, 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 okay. Get inside. Your drug is a He has a drug right. of arcades. All right, anyways. Okay, All so right. guys, <laughs> Justin, calm down. All right. All right. So, so, so anyways, I lo- I had so much fun. This is a cool show. Justin's uh Justin is actually a really good musician, even though he doesn't talk about it. But uh yeah, which I so so I, I think I have a I have a thing right now. What do you what? call it when we do a, a vote? A poll? Poll. I have a poll. And we're gonna do yes and no. Okay. I've been to asking Justin to do this forever and he hasn't done it yet. I have no Who thinks radio. Justin should write a one up weekly theme song that we play for the intro live every time? Like there is a song. Yes, if you think he should do that. I will wait while you vote. <laughs> Great. Yes. I think we got yes. some, we got some yes. yeses. Oh, I don't... yeah. Like, like okay. No. So, no. Oh, uh, Drifter well, Con. I guess we can't do it. Now no. he's not going to do it. No, no, no. see, Justin, Justin's... In, nope, you made him all sensitive. He's never going to do it now. <laughs> Zohar, maybe you can help me. Uh, you, you, uh, you write some music too, right? We got a poop in there. I think the poop might be because you said no, but I'm thinking there's a lot more yeses. There's actually, it's well, almost see, unanimous see, yes. I, I do know... Let's see. We could do do a one up weekly song. I think it needs to be, like, I think it should be like. I don't really like punk music, but I think no. A lot I of people, want it to be very aggressive. Yeah. One of my favorite theme songs of all time, and you guys tell me if this is your favorite. One of my favorite theme songs, and it gets me pumped up, is the Angry Video Game Nerd theme song. I love his. I love his song. So I think it needs to have a little bit of rock to it. Although his song changed a lot. It used to be like an acoustic song, and then they rocked it out. But I love that song. I don't know. If Ralph can get electrocution, Justin can damn well write a song. All right. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so my first thought was like, what if, what if, uh, what if the song was like very I'm gonna take like you back to the past? Oh, sorry, I like that song. So I was trying to think like, should it be a song I write, or should should it be a parody? You know, like a jingle parody. So I was thinking of like. What, Remy eight one six nine. Thanks for the super chat. Appreciate that. One up theme song and Toy Shark Jingle. <laughs> <laughs> Toy Shark Jingle. Um, so I was kind of thinking of old bands that I used to listen to that have good, like punky songs, but they're parodies too. So I was thinking of Me First and the Gimme Gimmies. And um, um, oh, if you could come up with different lyrics to it, you know, it's like. And here's to you. Oh wait, Mrs. Tammy Robinson. thinks. Hey, we. Justin. Nice ignoring me now. That's great. Can you even hear me? Yes. All right. Um, I something, like so something Tam- grungy like so, that, right. right? Tammy's idea, probably our only female viewer. Tammy's idea, which thank you for that. <laughs> you boosting our <laughs> metrics in the female uh, population here. We appreciate right. that. Uh, no, I think you've been watching for a while. Actually, it's Tammy and Nikki are the only, are the two. But um, but what's really cool is she's saying a parody. And I think it should be a parody, a parody too, because there's so many funny things that have happened along the time that we've done these. I mean, technically, we were doing shows before we were calling it the One Up Weekly. So we've probably got a good 15, 16 shows in the bag. Is this the song? It sounds like you're playing a Green Day song. You're playing Green Day, dude. What am I hearing? I'm hearing like banging. Sometimes I give myself I like someone's banging something. Creeps. All right, Justin, we gotta we gotta wrap That's it up. That's the one up weekly up. song right there. No, it's not. That's a Green Day song. That is no, not the one up weekly. It's a parody, week. right? No. It could be like, do you have the time to listen to Ralph Wine? 
No. <laughs> Ralph is one of those. <laughs> Stringer Films. Stringer's. <laughs> God dang it, Justin. Okay, stop, please. All right. Stringer Sometimes Films. He gives himself the creeps. <sighs> Okay, when I said okay. I was when I said I was excited about you doing the guitar, I didn't want you to overdo it. We're getting into overdo it territory. All right, fine. <laughs> I was trying to write it live. What's better than writing, like doing a parody song, but doing writing the song live in All the right. last five minutes of our show? What's wrong with that? Everyone thinks it should be a heavier song. Are you drinking sugared Mountain Dew or sugar free? Sugared. Mm, it's Justin. We, dude, don't shame me. This is all Just we look. could get in the sore. Look. Like. You don't have the options you, you used to. I get fat looking at food, <laughs> so if I if I even like look at sugared soda, I mean I know the diet's not good for me either, but I gotta cut out the sugar because the sugar I'm like. And all right, the, and all the, right, to everyone in the chat, let me let me know what's cooler, four by three Justin or musician Justin, because Ralph wants the four by three guy back. And I think I'm done with that person. No, did you see this? Um, th there was, I think it was uh, Cats Retro Gaming who said this thing about we should have an episode called Revolution of Resolution. I think that's oh, really that's cool. Um, I think that's really cool. Because honestly, that topic for that show could be all about the best way to play retro gaming consoles. And I th and you are like, you're. I look to you for that a lot of times. Like I'm calling you up and I've learned a lot from you. Mm -hmm. So that would be a cool, but show but anyways i wanted to end the show on time too we're actually a minute over but i think we should end the show i think i think we should stick to our time um i don't know someone's drifter comic said i'm with ralph but i don't i don't know what i said that he's with maybe you could tell me what it is i don't know <laughs> ralph on something so <laughs> uh i like four by three justin a lot of people oh, like four by yeah. four three justin yeah i mean i like four three justin it's just sometimes you get oh, we're doing it with the four three you know but um all right are we okay. good? You got anything else to say? I think we're good. I really appreciate everyone joining us for the Play Choice 10. What'd you guys episode. think of the Play Choice 10? Cool yeah. stuff, right? I think like, it's really cool. Those old NES games are a really part of our history, including arcades. I don't think we should be ashamed if you uh, enjoy the old NES games. I think some people are like, you're only hip and cool if you like Sega, but we'll get to Sega soon because I'm sure Ralph's going to buy that mega tech thing eventually, right? I, actually, the funny thing is... <laughs> see? Wait, hold on. I, do I have it up here? No, hold on. Uh, oh, shoot, it's downstairs. I actually have a JAMA Model 2 Sega Genesis. Wow. So it, it actually hooks up to an arcade cabinet. So if you want to run real Sega, not, not, um, you know, not FPGA, real Sega Genesis hardware... I was, yeah, um, Stringer Films, thank you for the $2. Really appreciate that. Did you watch the Bjork CRT video as research? I actually, two people sent me that, and I think you actually sent it, and I haven't watched it yet. There's some, like, weird video with Bjork in it, in a CRT, and I don't even know why. Like, she... She loves retro stuff. She loved retro stuff in the 80s. Yeah, Sega Sega was my system. I'm a Sega fanboy. Dude, Zohar, that, that, so there's one he thing. He just likes Sega because they had blood in Mortal Kombat. That's can I, all. Can I, set, can I show you guys something really quick? Uh, really quick. I promise it'll be quick. Sure. All right. Okay, so Ralph is going. He's turning around, and he's going to grab something. It's probably Sega-related. He put it behind his back, and now he's sitting on right. it. One of my prized possessions in my in my Sega collection is this. Oh, here it comes. Do you guys know what that is? Oh my god, it's a CDX. Yeah, this is one of my very favorite items I have in my Sega collection. I don't have enough Sega stuff, but this is like I love this cuz I oh. had one of these and I rebought it. I'm bummed that I rebought it, but I did rebuy it. Uh only problem with this is that so I bought this from Oh crap. Did you just break it? Oh, no. No. Oh. Okay. Okay, we're good. Uh, <laughs> we're nice, good. Nice, we're nice. good. All right. Um, that's it. Um, <laughs> that it's, I love the CDX. We'll have to do, you know, we'll have to do, what do you guys think about doing a video of like the cool, like some of the cool retro stuff that we have, like just kind of like showing off some or things that are meaningful to us from retro collecting stuff? Because then that way... We can engage with you guys and, and tell you guys tell us like what that one thing is in your collection that you just love. I think that'd be a fun episode yep. to do. But anyways, we got to go. We have yep. to go.
The show we we is promised over. our significant others that we would keep yep. this to an hour. Thank you so much. What do you have to say, Ralph? Are you are you going to buy another cab for next week's show? Because as long as you keep on buying cabs, we have plenty of material. I mean, uh, it's, it's no, pretty good. no, no, no more cabs right now. Uh, although there is something that that I've been eyeing locally that that you know about, but I think it's too expensive, so it's probably not in the cards. It's unfortunate. There's a real there's a guy here locally in Arizona. I have no idea how he got it. I don't know. I think he's a, like an antique seller or something. I think he got an auction. It's a pristine Donkey Kong. It mean oh, it yeah. is like really good. Yeah, I've been telling you like <laughs> so. you sell me your old one, you know, and then you buy that. There you go. Oh, that's awesome. Uh Sean Powers just checking in, missed most of the show, but I can't wait to watch from the beginning. Uh, but here's a super chat to support you. Thanks, man. Really appreciate that. I we really appreciate everyone's support. Super yeah. chats or not, you guys are awesome. And uh this this, this I mean, if you really think about it, most of you guys that watch are the ones that watched when we started doing the show mm -hmm. together really at CES. Yep. And uh it's been really fun. Like we've had a lot of time. We, uh, we 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 notice even if we're not able to bring everyone's comment to the forefront, like we've noticed who those people are that have continued to yeah, watch. For sure. And that's really awesome. So we definitely appreciate that continued support. And then all the new people that are coming in, that are learning about the show for the first and, time. And it's I really cool. appreciate they they stay along for the journey, even though we've we've gone through a lot of different episodes. And even though we skipped one episode, there was one time, remember, we couldn't do an episode, if you, if you know what I mean. And, uh, and, and they stuck around for that one too, because uh, we had a lot of fun on some oddball episodes that we did. I don't know what you're talking about, but that's cool. Um, all right, so last last super chat because we got to wrap it up. But wait, uh, wait, wait, you forgot my family. You got to do him first. Oh, my family. Uh, I would love to see one of you do game streaming. So I used to do a lot of game streaming. If you look way, way, way back, I was doing game streaming a lot before uh, Justin actually joined a couple I, I of those. Told him to stop. <laughs> so, we're, so we're, we are Justin and I need to figure out a couple things. There's a couple weird things with uh, some of the software we're working on. So we're trying to get that going again. But uh, there's definitely times where he, him, and I were thinking playing against each other, maybe even playing some of you guys. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to figure that out. But but thank you, my family, really appreciate that. And then there was one more by Zohar, and then we really got to wrap it up because we'll we'll just keep going. Yep. Um, just bought a Genesis Mini and jacked, jacked. It's Hacked. with. Oh, oh, hacked, <laughs> jacked. <laughs> what? Um, that's awesome. Yeah, I, I, I actually the only, the only. Um, it's weird. I get weird about mini consoles. I like keeping them stock. Although I did do that weird mod with the naughty stick, as Wicked mm -hmm. Gamer and Collector calls it. I can't remember the mm -hmm. my blue, true blue, whatever. But uh, yeah, I think that's it, Justin. Yeah, I think you should play us out. I play you out with what? I don't know. Whatever whatever song is fitting. And I'm going to end broadcast as you're playing at some point. You got to just be creative. I'm going to be be creative. All right. All right. Um, Play us out. Just just give me a second, all right? A lot of people Get are having hard times, so uh, maybe we'll do a little, something a little soft. Paul Prue, Lincoln, Rhode Island, baby. I'm a one-way motorway I would wonder to you Sorry you back home I'm out of tune a little bit Oh, A little bit <laughs> It's that banging It's times like these You learn to live again It's times like these You give and give again It's times it's like uplifting. these you Learn to love again it's times like these every time and time again. All right, guys, that's it. Thank you for watching, we guys. We'll see you on the next one. Actually, I mean, we will see you on, on the, next the next one. Take care, guys. Thanks care. so much.